Hey class, so today we're going to talk about uh, the process of cellular respiration. So cellular respiration is a, is a three product uh, chain. Uh, one, glycolysis, that occurs in the cytoplasm. The second part is a citric acid cycle that occurs in the mitochondria. Then we have the electron transport chain, which is in the inner mitochondria uh, membrane. Um, and that is the total part of cellular respiration. It is a series of steps, but it is a high energy yielding process that this is how whenever we eat something through the process of digestion, it is used for the body. So the process of glycolysis starts in the cytoplasm. It occurs in two halves. The first five reactions are glucose priming and splitting. So it takes this six carbon and splits it into two, three uh, carbon pieces then it is further reduced is uh, further uh, further further oxidized and spinning off all of these different products the end result of that is the ATP and the NADH that is being formed from it so when we look at the process of cellular respiration we're taking that simple sugar we're taking oxygen we are uh, breaking that down into water and uh, carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is that waste product that we breathe out. When we breathe in that oxygen, we use it for energy, and then we breathe out all of those waste products in that carbon dioxide. And so when that first process of cellular respiration glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm, it can be either aerobic or anaerobic. Anaerobic meaning not having oxygen aerobic meaning oxygen but we're going to go through the aerobic process uh, because it is much more uh, detailed and also is much more uh, bigger so if glycolysis were to only occur in the uh, in, in the cytoplasm you would only have two ATP being generated however the whole process of cellular respiration nets between 36 to 38 ATP so you see you are superly multiplying the number of ATP that can be generated um, even through that short process. And so even as we are, are moving and we are uh, developing through this process, we begin to see what happens, we begin to see how it occurs and why it occurs. So once that initial split and breakdown has been done, it moves to the second phase of cellular respiration, which is called uh, the tricarboxylic acid cycle, or the citric acid cycle, or the Krebs cycle, uh, named after Krebs, the scientist who first discovered it. And so basically what is happening in the Krebs cycle is a continued breakdown of products um, that will continue to, to work down your scale. But the citric acid cycle is the second of the three processes. And so what happens is that pyruvate that was finally formed in the last process of glycolysis undergoes further splitting through a process called oxidative decarboxylation. Um, and all that means is the splitting of carbon groups to form carbon dioxide and then uh, it spins off to completely begin to continue to break down that glucose molecule. Decarboxylation means the removal of carbon. Dehydrogenation means the removal of hydrogen. So there are four major things that happens during this second stage of cellular respiration. One, the release of carbon dioxide. Two, the creation of ATP. NADH and FADH and three the complete carbo the, the, the complete catabolized uh, process of glucose so glucose is completely catabolized during the citric acid cycle so that C6H1206 that we saw at the beginning in glycolysis is completely wiped out during this citric acid cycle uh, the citric acid cycle takes place in eight stages. It occurs inside of the mitochondria. So 
the cycle actually goes through two turns because remember there were two molecules of pyruvate that were formed from the breakdown of the initial um, of the initial glucose molecule so it takes one cycle to burn off each one so for every molecule of glucose there will be two cycles of the uh, citric acid cycle so for every one molecule of glucose there are two turns on the cycle so basically this goes through a process of rearrangement it goes through a process of decarboxylation dehydrogenation and so at the end of the day it is broken all the way down and it spins off all of those products that you would see so at the end of the day the citric acid cycle creates ATP NADH FADH and carbon dioxide that is what it spins out now the NADH and the FADH these are um, high energy uh, molecules that will enter the electron transport chain the ATP is what it is but that FADH and that NADH that was also formed in the process of glycolysis is now going to move into this chain so we know that glycolysis started in uh, the cytoplasm it has moved into the mitochondria for the citric acid cycle and now it is moving into the electron transport chain um, that also is inside of the mitochondria so basically once we have gotten into the mitochondria we're going to stay there but now we're looking at what is happening on the inner membrane of the mitochondria on something called an F1 uh, molecule but you don't have to worry about that that's more of your heart biology but know that it does occur on the inner membrane of the mitochondria and so the electron transport chain um, is the last part of this and this is where you're gonna see the mass production of ATP because as you notice we didn't see a lot during the first two processes but now you're gonna begin to see through a series of reactions now you have two types of reactions endogonic and exergonic either you're gonna take in uh, energy endogonic or you're going to release it exergonic um, the electron the electron transport chain is a huge exergonic or energy releasing process and it is both a reduction oxidation process it's called a redox but it has a very long name called oxidative phosphorylation and that is because the ATP synthesis is coupled to a redox reaction so basically what you're looking at is the oxygen as a hydrogen acceptor and then the electron donor which is your NADH and your FADH so the oxygen is transferring is that hydrogen is being transferred to the oxygen so that is how you're getting what the water out of the end product reaction we saw the carbon dioxide from the citric acid cycle but where was the water going to come in the water is coming in through these oxidative phosphorylation processes where those hydrogen atoms are being taken apart being given to that oxygen and then as they move in and out they're producing that ATP and so that is what is happening so basically it's like going down a a, a, uh, a, a barrier or gradient the electrons have very high energy at the top and by the time they're done they have very low energy so there were so these electrons are releasing their energy releasing their energy and each step of the chain those electrons lose energy so they start out with a high energy content and then they lose energy as they go down the stage so what's happening is FADH and that uh, NADH they are being oxidized during every step of the electron transport chain um, the chain has four complexes uh, something called flavin mononuclei 
something called ubiquinone, then you have cytochromes, and then you have oxygen. It is important to know that oxygen is the final acceptor of the electron transport chain, and that product is water. So if you wondered how that ends out, that is where you get the water from. It is from oxygen being the final acceptor of those electrons as they go down those four complexes. And so it is awesome to see. Um, I gave you some really more interesting notes about how it goes throughout that process. Um, but the last part during this, uh, during this process is something called chemiosmosis. Remember, we're going down this gradient. But chemiosmosis uh, chemi is how the energy gets coupled to the cells. And so this uh, was proposed by a scientist called Peter Mitchell. And so this chemiosmotic model is how is ATP synthesized during the electron transport chain as it is moving through um, the gradients. So as the electrons move down this gradient, they're using their energy to pump protons from the inner membrane of the mitochondria into the inner membrane space. So through diffusion, um, high to low movement across a concentration gradient, these exergonic reactions provide the energy. So how efficient is cellular respiration? Uh, cellular respiration is 40% efficient. Um, the other 60% is released as energy. And so each part of this stage releases different modes of ATP or how ATP can be generated. And so you have eight ATP generated during the process of glycolysis. You have six um, during the formation of acetyl-CoA you have 24 ATP formed as a result of the citric acid cycle. And so when you add that all together, that's 14 and 24, it yields that 38 ATP. Now, well, how is that important? But you would look and you say, well, we didn't see 38 ATP. We had a whole lot of NADHs and FADH uh, uh, squares that were being produced. Well, good rule of thumb when it comes to this. For every NADH that is inside of the electron transport chain, it produces three ATP. For every one FADH2 that you have in the electron transport chain, they create two molecules of ATP. And so in glycolysis, you had your two ATP being formed and you had two molecules of NADH being formed. So by rule, we know that you have three ATP being generated for each one of those NADHs. You had two of them, so you have eight. The whole, uh, in the acetyl-CoA uh, movement, that intermediary process, you have two NADHs created, which gives you that six ATP. And then in the citric acid cycle, you have those two ATP, the six NADHs, and the two FADH squares from the citric acid cycle that move in and they create those 24 ATP for a grand total of 38. So by the numbers, aerobic respiration is not very efficient. I mean, when you're only looking at a 40% efficiency, but because your body needs what? Energy, it's that energy combustion that is really giving up that energy and then you have that water then you have that waste product and that is the whole process of cellular respiration just from a general basic foundational standpoint photosynthesis is exactly the opposite where you're having um, oxygen in the presence of sunlight you know plus water to form sugars and uh, carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is what plants use to create their energy in the presence of sun through photosynthesis in their chloroplast. 
their waste product is oxygen, whereas our waste product is carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is toxic to humans as oxygen is toxic to plants. Uh, plants go through two processes. It can go through the light process or the dark process. Um, the light process is much more efficient. Um, same similar efficiency to uh, cellular respiration. But the dark reaction can occur. Um, so a lot of times people say, hey, can you live with plants in a greenhouse? Yes, because the plants use our waste product and we use their waste product. So you can seal yourself in a room full of plants and you'll have some fresh oxygen that you can breathe because those plants will give off um, oxygen. Um, so that is uh, the whole process of cellular respiration. Uh, just in a nutshell, um, I have plenty of notes and there are other activities that I left for you that will help deepen your understanding of it. But a lot of it is just real hard science. Um, so don't get caught too much on the the bigger biological terms I think I've given you a, a lot of big biological terms um, during the course of this lecture and through your reading uh, so hopefully this will be um, enjoyable to you um, relaxing to you uh, just take some time you know dig through it a little bit more um, but definitely uh, between the lecture and between uh, the notes and the pictures and through the connects um, it will definitely uh, give you a better understanding and a deeper understanding into how your body's metabolism actually takes the simple food that you eat and turns it into energy that runs our whole body.